What we were able to demonstrate, first let's talk about side effects and toxicity, which is always important. We need to confirm in GBM patients that there isn't anything unexpected that happens because we're talking about the brain. Uh, and indeed, we really didn't see any safety signal. The side effects of both drugs were comparable, um, either as single agent or in combination to what's been demonstrated uh, in for pembrolizumab across the spectrum of many different cancer indications. We didn't see anything new or different in GBM patients. Uh, and um, for the combination, we saw the similar types of side effects we see with bevacizumab, some hypertension, some mild fatigue, but nothing um, that stood out, no, no problem. So first of all, uh, the main, one of the main findings of, this, of the study was that we confirmed that combination could be used safely without any unexpected or significant side effects for patients. Um, in terms of efficacy, uh, what we unfortunately saw was that pembrolizumab by itself uh, very, had very little minimal activity. There was a small um, subset of patients who remained on single agent activity for more than six months, but just a small percentage, unfortunately. Um, for the combination um, with bevacizumab, um, and we used a standard dosing schedule of bevacizumab, um, which is FDA approved and what we know the benchmarks for progression-free survival and overall survival are for GBM. We saw basically about the same degree of progression-free survival and overall survival. So we did not see that the addition of pembrolizumab enhanced therapeutic benefit when combined with bevacizumab for recurrent GBM patients. So it was a disappointing result, both in terms of progression-free survival, PFS6 is the primary endpoint, and even when we looked at overall survival,